Gray. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, and uh, welcome to the um, North South uh, podcast with myself, Karen Khan. And Cameron Archibald. Yeah, it, it feels like we haven't done this in a while because it's been like three weeks since our last one. And yeah, it kind of feels like we haven't done this in a while. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been moving in me, uh, the last couple of weeks. And yeah. With some work stuff, I got a new job. I am now doing a teaching job where I live. And yeah. uh, Kieran's just been destroying everyone in Pokemon Go. So I've been keeping <laughs> yeah, it so yeah, Yeah, I. I have literally spent the entire week playing Pokemon Go because of the whole Megas, but that's not what this podcast is about. Because <laughs> anyway, so it will be one day. <laughs> maybe one day we could we could release like a bonus uh, podcast when we when we talk about Pokemon Go. But uh, okay, oh, so sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So what is this podcast about today? <laughs> we are going to be discussing um, political experiences, and we're specifically discussing how uh, people enter politics and I think from my perspective in a way I'm hoping to just ask you a lot of the questions about you Kieran. For those who aren't aware, Kieran at the two of us is the only person who's actually stood for election for the Labour Party and I think that's a really interesting uh, area to get into because you know Kieran you've been involved since 2017? Yeah yeah I joined I joined on the day that um, uh, that Theresa May announced the snap election. Big, yeah, I joined. I joined on that day. So I guess before we get to you joining, maybe a bit of background. So you weren't always involved in politics. What no, was like your kind of no, thing before you were involved in politics? No, I guess I guess uh, I was always like on the left, of of course, and I guess I guess. I always identified myself as a socialist, but I didn't know what that meant when I was younger because I just thought, you know, my views were my views. But then, but then when I joined like the Labour Party, I heard the word socialism for the first time. I thought, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Even though I'm not one to really like labels, I guess, I guess socialism is like the only label I probably like. <laughs> so, what were you into? Like, what was like? I mean, like, what did you do like before you kind of joined the Labour Party? Like, what, what did you have a specific interest, or were you not interested in anything at all? And like, this kind of caught your eye. What, what, how would you describe yourself before you were really got interested in politics? I guess, I, I guess I was, I was like just a student really, and 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 I wasn't really politically engaged until about probably 2015. I think, I think the first election I was eligible to vote in because I'm only 25 uh, was was the 2015 election and and I voted green in that one and yeah and oh. uh, yeah 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 I voted green in 15 uh, for 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 a variety of reasons but yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, so obviously you're not cancelled from your own party. Now, <laughs> that. But uh, no, I think I think everyone knows. I, th- I think everyone knows. Like with my local branch, I'm I'm guessing everyone knows. Cause that's we- that's actually quite it's quite interesting actually because I just think about that there. Um, I my first vote was 2014 in the tw- in the independence referendum. Yes. But r- yeah. right after that though, I lost the vote because obviously in UK elections you have to be 18 to vote. Even I was uh, I was 60, I think I was 16 or 17 when I when I voted in 2014. So yeah. um that's quite interesting. So yeah. I voted before you, but then I was immediately disenfranchised and then you were in fra- <laughs> and you were enfranchised to vote as well. But okay, so uh what was your first like a political event that you went to? What was like the first thing um, that was your first political experience would you say <laughs> i think uh i think it was it, it was a local branch meeting that within the labor part uh actually no 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 that's a lie because because i joined joined election and then obviously join the join election labor party don't have branch meetings because they're really focused on uh campaigning so uh so actually i think my first uh campaigning session was in ifield uh which is like 10 minutes from where I live uh so so I joined on the day the snap election was announced and then like a couple of days later I got um I, I got a email like a welcome email and then I got a a schedule with like all the campaigning sessions so uh, um so so yeah the first one that I did was in Ifield which is which is really funny because then one of my good friends then they went on to become a counsellor in that area. Uh, I spent so much time there trying to um, trying to get her elected as council. So yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. 
And when when you started getting involved, how quickly did you make friends? Would you say was it did it kind of take time to uh, make other friends with the Labour Party, or did you just immediately jump in and like was you know who could relate to everyone within the group? Yeah, at, at the um, uh, at first, I tried to make friends with everyone because, uh, because um, yeah, yeah. So I just tried to make friends with everyone, and then and then like very quickly, I kind of figured out who like the left people were. They like <laughs> who like the centrist. It, 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 it was all very factional because uh, because like my local Labour Party isn't like the most leftist local uh, Labour Party. Like um, like like I don't think the majority of our councillors are really on like the hard left of like democratic socialism but uh but i mean they are all on the left to some uh, uh, to was it to like, some extent but yeah i do kind of regret getting getting involved in the factionalism a bit too early but i guess that's i guess you make a lot of mistakes when you first join but uh but yeah but i guess i very quickly figured out like who were the lefties and who were the centrists and like obviously the Blairites. it was free kind of funny so that's quite interesting. So for you, you were left to wing before you joined the Labour Party. Like yeah. you were just kind of naturally, you were very self aware. Whereas I think for people I speak to, they they don't really identify as being left wing or right wing before they join a political party. Usually, and it's only when they kind of start reading into the party, party itself when they then yeah. join and go, "I am left wing or right wing or yeah, centre left, centre right." Yeah. I guess that's because when you join a political party, you kind of get more like educated on political terms like i didn't know what socialism meant until i joined the labor party like uh, like like um like i always identified as being as as like being a non-conservative but like but like i didn't really understand what the terms left wing and right wing were before i was in i was in like my late teens so i think i think a lack of political education on my part probably probably stopped me from from becoming uh uh um involved early on but then like when i was younger obviously it was new labor so <laughs> so um and 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 yeah that wasn't a very left-wing party like when i was younger but so uh, so so i don't think i would have joined new labor like when i was younger but like when like when like when like Miliband kind of kind of came in and like kind of changed the face of the, of the labor party i guess i guess he was trying to take the party more more to left because 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 i do think Miliband is sort of left-wing like his dad is like a famous marxist or something so uh, so so i do think he's kind of left-wing but the problem is he was surrounded by a very bad cabinet <laughs> like uh, like and so uh, so um so like with Miliband because there weren't that many left-wing mps when he was there uh he was surrounded by a very like blairite cabinet so um so that kind of like tainted him in a way but yeah <laughs> I actually remember, I think there was a weird story in 2015 about Millman's dad, I think. I can't remember what the joke was, or it wasn't a joke, like some story around such a, a crazy story, some uh, paper around a crazy story on his dad that yeah, it was almost it, akin to that of, oh, this guy ate my hamster or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think he was like, Ed Millman's dad ate my kitten or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I remember seeing that, but like, but like, um, but... I remember, like, when the press were like coming after after Miliband because because like he called for the breakup of like Murdoch's empire, and he went after really powerful people. So, so like when the press were first coming after Miliband and like calling him like too left, when obviously, obviously the state the state of the of the of the Labour Party going into fifteen was not left at all. But uh, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, like 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 they were going after him so much. And uh, I remember like he was really like uh, he was he was really also uh, vilified for for eating eating a bacon sandwich. And I think that's what really contributed to like the loss of the Labour campaign in fifteen because uh, because of like how like vilified he was and like. And like how that like, stupid he looked mm. eating that bacon sandwich, and <laughs> I just can't so, believe it. <laughs> like a bacon sandwich <laughs> changed the whole course of British history. <laughs> so to go back to to yourself, you obviously joined on. There was a day after Theresa May announced the snap election. No, and you saw yourself as no. 
it was the day on so so oh, on, this, on the day itself yeah yeah so yeah. Uh, so so i saw i saw a press conference when she was like i have just chaired a meeting of the cabinet and we have agreed that there's going to be a general election on the 8th of june so then that's when i joined like i joined like literally the second she said those words i was like okay now is the time to do something about this so on that basis then like you you, you joined then yeah was there any specific factor to you joining because obviously you were left wing before you joined but was there any like other things that contribute to you joining like any policy announcements beforehand yeah, or yeah. events that occurred yeah i really like jeremy corbyn uh i really like jeremy corbyn uh in in 2015 i wasn't that aware of him because like that was when he first came to prominence in like obviously obviously he he was an mp for like almost two decades at that point but uh but when he first went for the leadership because he was chosen by the socialist campaign group uh to to be the left candidate this time so when he first ran for leadership that's when i first kind of became aware of him and i was doing like loads of research on him like when that happened but i didn't join at that time because i didn't know if he would win or not but uh i and also at the time i was really worried that if he did win he would be stabbed in the back and of course a year later that's exactly what happened when um when uh, when um, Ms. Smith like tried to challenge him but <laughs> so yeah okay so we we kind of learned a bit more about why you joined and you're definitely into one of the like one of the you're definitely part of the, the younger generation that in england that kind of joined up to kind of get with the Corbyn factor or mm. Corbynism, essentially. Yeah, yeah. What was your so? What was like one of your first experiences within the Labour Party? So, like, what kind of activities did you do? What kind of, did you get any training? What were kind of like the main things that that you kind of what were the main experiences you had when you first joined? Yeah. So, so like when I first joined, because it was like right in the middle of an election campaign, it was like really hectic. Like I was, uh, I was door knocking like three, um, like six hours a day with like three campaigning sessions, and then and then uh, I was also working working in one of our unite offices here because. Because I like, joined the um, during the election, the trade union unite because because we have an office here in Crawley. They let us literally have free reign over that office for the entire election campaign. So I was in there quite a lot, uh, and and I was also in the Labour Club a lot. It's no longer the Labour Club anymore, but uh, but like that was where we ran the majority of our campaign in 17 so uh so so i guess the first experiences was just like door knocking and like working like behind the scenes as well like doing like phone canvassing as well yeah it was it was it was a really hectic time so to join the labor party all right so so you obviously you're you kind of dive straight into the deep end then would you say would you say that's good for a new member to join a political party to join at the deep end of political yeah. activity, or do you, would you say it's better to join when things are a bit more calm and a bit no, more kind of no. less political? Actually, no. I think it's more better to join a political party when things are happening because 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 like there is no better time to join when an election is happening because because like when an election is happening, especially a general, not so much local because I don't think as many people care about local elections, but like. But like when a general election is happening, that's when like everyone cares about politics. Like um, so, so I think so. The best time to join a party is when an election is happening because like that's when they will have the most stuff for you to do. So, so to get like the full experience of like first joining, I would recommend. I mean, obviously, I would recommend joining a party anyway. Uh, but but if you like want the best experience to join a party to like join, I think the best time would be like right in the middle of an election campaign because there'll always be stuff for you to do like 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 even like within the 2019 election like like for like maybe like maybe for three months i was like busy like eight hours it was literally like a full-time job i was like busy eight hours a day i was like delivering leaflets uh knocking on doors like and like this was before covid as well so before it was like safe to do all, all these things so yeah i was like knocking on doors uh leafleting and like showing like newcomers around because because like during the um 2019 election because because crawley was considered a marginal they sent so many people from like london they sent so many people from london uh so i was so i was meeting like so many people every day and and because and because like and like when you first go canvassing, you get split into different groups, right? And because and because often I was the only Crawley person within a canvassing group, I would always get um, 
I would always be like on the board of that group. Um, so, so then I would like direct people where to go and like what streets are because uh, because we had so many people in nineteen. I was I was and and when you go canvassing, like you get split into groups. So often I was the only crawly person within that group. So I kind of had to take like a lead role in like some of those canvassing um, events. Do you have any? strange or funny stories when you've gone canvassing because oh, like, like... i've had like when i've done door knocking on behalf of the smp yeah it's, you, you can meet some really wild characters some of them are lovely some of them are terrifying but like what about from your end though like do you oh, have any you... kind of funny stories of any kind of canvassing oh yeah loads i could write a book and i <laughs> and i have but, you better... but yeah loads like what's loads of funny stories uh there um there there have been times where i've I've uh, I've met like really like conservative people, but um, but I've kind of like kind of sort of uh, changed their way a bit. I don't know how they ended up voting in the end, but but I felt like those conversations really went well, and and I've also had like uh, like like when I was like knocking in areas where like predominantly elder members of society um, uh, live and. and 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 they're always happy to talk to you about politics like uh, the the elder generation and and i was expecting like the, the majority of the elder generation to be like more conservative and like less like liberal so yeah but um but but that hasn't been but but that hasn't been the case uh, or maybe it's just because when i said i'm from labor maybe they might have <laughs> held back their views a bit but yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> that's okay i can actually relate to it Quite a bit of that, to be fairly honest. I yeah. think every every canvasser has a very similar story, almost. But um, yeah. let's talk now about you going on to become a council candidate. So oh. <laughs> you originally you joined the Labour Party, but you didn't join it to become a councillor. But no, no, you ended up becoming a council candidate for Crawley. So explain to me what 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 was occurring that led you to become a candidate or at least consider becoming a candidate what okay. did you ask to do it or did someone confront you or well, what's the story behind that okay well um well you can only stand for labor when you've been a member for a year unless unless there's very special circumstances which you've had to get permission from like the highest up in the labor party but like, you can you can only stand for the labor party when you've been a member for a year so because of that i was uneligible to stand in 18 so so I spent the majority of those elections just helping other people. But like when it came to 2019, like, like when I first joined, I kind of enjoyed it a lot and I kind of got to know all the local councillors. I, I, got, I got on the local labour group for local council. So if you don't know what the labour group is, a labour group is, is, um, is a meeting of all the labour councils on the Pacific on on a pacific council so like so every council that has labor councillors will have a labor group where um where where all the councillors discuss what they will do on the council if they're if they're in power they will be discussing decisions if they are in opposition they will be discussing uh the the people in power's decisions to see how they will respond to those decisions and um and and every labor group are allowed free observers i believe well, it's free in Crawley, but we're a very small council, so it might be bigger in like district councils. But, um, but yeah, in, in Crawley, we allowed free observers, and I got elected to the group of uh, to the group observers role in eighteen. And then, like when I got on the council uh, observers, and I started observing a lot of meetings. I was like, I could do this. <laughs> I could do this <laughs> so uh so yeah and then so uh so then so then I I applied to be a candidate in 2019 I got um endorsed by the LCF because uh because to because like to be able to run who, who, who are they the yeah LCF. yeah I'm about to explain so right, um, yeah yeah um yeah so uh, so the LCF stands for local campaign forum and, and every local Labour Party will have one and you can't run as a candidate unless you get an endorsement from the LCF and um, and so um, so I was endorsed by the LCF to be a candidate after after I passed my first interview so um, so when you first apply you like fill out a form that your CLP secretary should give you and then after after you filled out that form you'll be invited to an interview and then and then that that interview is with is with uh, what it depends on what branch but that interview should be with people independent from 
also from the local CLP. So, so they're not like biased towards people within the CLP. So that, so that interview should be, um, should be with people independent of the CLP. And then from that interview, you will either be put forward or not to be endorsed by the LCF. So if you are put forward by that to be endorsed by the LCF, then the LCF will um will choose to endorse you or not endorse you and so the lcf is made up of the executive committee of of the labor party local labor party that is um that is uh that are not candidates so um so, so every local labor party will have an executive committee and to be on that like and to be on that executive committee you need to be elected by 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 the, by the local party agm and then what and then and then the AGM takes place once a year. So, so the committee is, so there's so there's much. There's a to lot to this. Holy crap. There's so <laughs> much to explain. So, uh, yeah. So the, so then after, after you get elected to the EC, if you are not a candidate in the local elections, then the EC becomes the LCF. So, uh, and then, so if you are endorsed by the LCF, you get to run as a, you, you, you then get to put yourself forward to, was it to run? But if you are not endorsed by the LCF, then you have, then you have, then you have two options. You can either appeal that endorsement, uh, that or well, that lack of endorsement, and then that gets taken up by Southern Region. And I and and I actually had to do that my third time, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, so then you can either appeal or not appeal, and and then and then after that then you get to put yourself forward to what to the local branches and then the local branches will then select their candidate and then that candidate goes forward to the election but yeah there's so much to explain <laughs> let's touch let's let's touch on one thing you said there actually I, I'm, I'm interested in this one so you had an interview right yeah what kind of stuff did you ask in the interview and what was the interview like itself yeah yeah the the interviews were very friendly but but mainly because i know a lot of people like within the party now so so the majority of people who i who i was interviewed with i actually know but but also but they weren't from crawley but um but i actually know but uh but like in the in the interview you are asked questions like what have you done for the labor party uh um are you are you paid up um how would you fix this local issue and um will you be uh will you abide by the group whip um so so they are very like basic also basic questions and and but the but the most important questions that they'll ask you is like, what have you done for the Labour Party like within the last year? How have you um, helped your local community like within the last year? Because obviously the point of local council is to help the, is, is to help the, the local community. So, so the two main questions they'll ask you is like, yeah, what have you done for your, what was it for your local community? Have you ever taken up roles within the Labour Party on the EC or like Southern Region or stuff like that? Ah, okay. So... <laughs> yeah. there, there is so much to it. Did anyone stand against you as well as for a candidate, or was it how many people you know how many people were involved with that? Oh yeah, so um, so so on my first year, when on my first year because it was an all up election, there were like thirty six seats to fill, so like so like people were standing against each other. So so for my first year, I got selected for a Tilgate seat. Uh, Tilgate, which was at the time marginal it's not marginal anymore <laughs> but, uh, but at the time it was marginal and so um so but but uh but i also put myself forward for 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 all the seats as well so for the first couple of safe seats people people were standing against me but then but then but then as the seats got more marginal and then obviously to the say conservative seats less people stand against you so um so so obviously there'll be loads of people standing for uh to be the candidate for all the safe seats and then as you get more marginal and marginal less people will stand and and like when it comes to like the safe tory seats we've we've like been in situations where we've been like begging people to stand just so we have a name on the paper <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sure I mean, it's like yeah. i'm sure it's like that within the smp as well and like i think it's like that in a lot of parties to be fair as yeah. well i mean uh, i don't know about begging <laughs> but maybe that's a little layer experience. But, uh, I, I mean, uh, there has been, uh, from what I'm aware, there has been some areas in which you, you, know, you really do encourage folk to stand, even if it's just yeah. to, for the sake of it. I know the Lib Dems and Sterling had something like that. I can't remember the, the, the guy's name, uh, but in the last election, they really begged uh, him to put his name forward. And the same for the woman before him as well. But um, 
that's a whole different thing in Sterling, though, that I can, I can, I can only half remember. But, um, okay, so you stood, for, so you're a candidate now. So you're a candidate, you got selected for it, for your seat. What was like campaigning then as the candidate itself? Was that uh, different yeah. from normal activism? And well, what, what yeah. Ch- yeah, well, um, well, well, when you're campaigning for someone else, you kind of have to say, oh, this is a candidate, blah, blah, blah. But then, but then like, when you're campaigning for yourself, it's like you get all the questions asked to you. <laughs> and so, so, so when you're campaigning on behalf of someone else, you don't really get that many questions because they want to talk to the candidate. So I'm always like, oh, so-and-so, this person wants to speak to you, blah, blah, blah. But then, but then when you're... N- but then when you are the candidate, like you can't pass pass the questions on to someone else <laughs> because like you because you're expected to answer people. So uh so yeah so yeah, so so the difference are is like probably ninety ninety percent more questions. Ninety percent more questions. And yeah, I think that that is the main difference. And you're and you're also asked a lot about your views. And and like sometimes you're asked about views that um that that don't necessarily have anything to do with cruelly because because they can they can often um tell also tell about about like what your moral and priorities are by the by the way you answer specific questions like i remember like once uh last year i was asked about my views on kashmir because obviously being from that sort of background <laughs> i was asked about my views on kashmir and yeah so yeah you, it's it is uh it i guess it's like 90 percent more questions when you're the candidate and you can't pass your questions on to someone else. <laughs> you the- so, talk to me about like the, about, like your friendships. Did like becoming candidate kind of affect how people saw you or viewed you? Did it, no. did it change how you engage with people at all, or did, was that just pretty much the same? Well, like not well, well, like not within my local party at, at all, because obviously I'm just the same person. But like, but, like with members of the public, I guess I started dressing a lot better. <laughs> I guess <laughs> dressing better. <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, like, like when I wasn't the candle, I would just go out in, in like, in my hoodie and jeans, but uh, and just like, and and like campaign with people else. But like, but like, but like when I was the candidate uh, uh, for, and especially, and especially like when we had like big Saturdays where like we would get people from like outside areas to come in. I. I would like dress in a suit and then like uh, address everyone before like we went out campaigning because obviously they would want a speech from the candidates like talk about local issues. So yeah, I guess I guess, I guess the local party didn't see me differently, uh, but uh, but I guess I guess when it came to like members of the public, I guess I guess that sort of does change interaction because you're sort of expected to do things when you are the candidate. So I guess that sort of. Is there, is there anything like you maybe didn't enjoy as much as you did as a normal activist when you're a candidate? Was there anything maybe you thought was a bit annoying or maybe maybe as you became a candidate, it was a responsibility you discovered you had to take on and you weren't expecting? Okay, so was there, did anything happen which you weren't expecting as a candidate? No, no, no. Uh, I guess I, I guess I... Um, I guess I enjoyed being candidate a lot more than just being a normal activist because obviously, uh, obviously, obviously when you are the candidate, uh, the campaign centres around you. Like, like you have final approval on leaflets and like, uh, and you have final a- approval on text and all that stuff. Well, at least I did. It's it, it's probably different. <laughs> maybe, but so maybe because my my organizer knows me too well that i wouldn't be happy with like pre proven words that that weren't written by me <laughs> but um but yeah uh, but, but yeah but, uh, but i guess i guess i guess everyone is different some people are just happy to have a generic leaflet uh, that has made my lower party but like when it comes to um like when it comes to my first campaign my first campaign uh because 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 i've been a candidate twice and this is my third time but it was cancelled because of covid so running again next year but first time uh i i wrote uh like candidates address and i wrote that with with help from my friend and and then that was put forward to be was one of my literatures but yeah so if do you have any advice for any future candidates going forward in any party what would you like your main kind of piece of wisdom be for anyone going forward in the future to be candidate i guess any party I guess my first advice would be to get known within the local party, like, like, because 
that is my first advice to basically get known and to and to show your face around like um yeah that because uh because like because like there there have been loads of times within our party that that there have been people coming forward but like we haven't known who they are so um so so obviously we have put them forward so they get a chance to put their case forward because it be pretty unfair to not let people through to like the second stage of the candidacy but uh but yeah so i guess but but then because like people don't know who these people are like when it came like like when it comes to like the branch voting they necessarily don't do very well so uh, so so i guess my biggest advice would be to get known within the local party and yeah that's that's my biggest advice to so basically get known attend everything you can and like 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 care about local issues and like I study all the areas that you want to run for. All right, okay. So now talk to me about the actual elections themselves that you took part in. So you took part in two. Uh, what was it like on, let's maybe talk about the election night itself. What was that like? Explain to me the process process of that itself. Like what did you do during election day? What happened during the actual count itself? What, what what was going on there? Yeah, so 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 my second experience was very unique because it was a by election, so I was the only one running. Uh, so so my second experience was very unique because it was a by election. But the first time it was, it was just a general local election, so there was like fifteen of us running together for like different seats. So the first time, so the first time I was running uh, because it was a two seat ward, so then Labour put me up and then they put uh, also someone else up uh and so we were sort of, so we were sort of working together to win those two seats and so and 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 that is a lot of like partnership and and that and that is a lot and that is a lot of coordination because obviously uh we because 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 like because some two seat wards can be massive so you can't do so you can't deliver like all the leaflets yourself so that's like, some so um so that is a lot so that is a lot of partnership and and then and then the second time i ran it was it was a very unique story because it was the same ward because 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 i lost in may but then the sitting council unfortunately passed away like three months after the election so then we had <laughs> why are you laughing i'm not why are you continue. laughing it's an inside sorry folks inside joke go on sorry go on go on why are you laughing okay okay well um so then, okay so uh um, so then um so then i um so then i was chosen to run again like three months after um uh, in that same seat so um so so a lot um of people like recognize me from the first time so then like when it comes to election day itself so like when it comes to election day itself, it's um, it's it's a very tough day because because you're up at half five in the morning, and then you meet your crew at six o'clock to do the early leaflet drop. Like the like the early leaflet drop is the most important part of the campaign because you catch people before they go to work. Uh, we don't knock on doors be, uh, uh, before like ten a.m. because that because you can't knock on doors before ten a.m. Otherwise people will get very grouchy. But so we do the so we do the early leaflet drop between 6 a.m and half nine without and and the and the early leaflet drop uh, you you have to be very silent when you go through letterboxes and and yeah and then and and so then the early leaflet drop stops at half nine and then we take a break for breakfast because uh, and, and committee rooms normally open at like quarter to ten and so then so then that's when people are expecting people so what committee rooms are is that is like committee rooms is like um it's like when um um every every marginal ward will have a committee room and and these are and these are when uh, like kind members of um of our party have like given up their entire house for the day to basically be the center of the campaign and uh and yeah so, so so committee rooms are normally sacked with lots of food and they're normally like people, people come and go like all day uh, and they normally open about quarter to nine for the first, for the first campaigning uh, door knocking from till about half 10 is, is like when we aim to start door knocking. But then, but then the busiest period of election day is like six to polling day because, because like six o'clock is when people are getting back from work. So then that is the busiest time. Uh, so uh yeah that is the busiest time and and then polls generally close at 10 
p.m. in the UK. I'm not sure what it's like in other countries, but um, but in the UK, polls normally normally close at 10 p.m. So then when so then when the polls close, we all go and watch the count together. So so we so we so we are normally door knocking literally 10 minutes before the polls close because because if you didn't know this if you if you go to the poll before they close but if they close while you were still in line they still have to legally let you vote i think that I is think. true yeah 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 so um, so so yeah if you if you didn't know this if you if you go to the poll for about if if you go to the poll before 10 p.m but they close while you're in line legally they still have to let you vote so so yeah so so i I don't think it's ever that busy in the uk as such i think it's like in u.s cities you see often like oh yes massive polling lanes they usually kind of these kind of outreaches of people not getting their vote because of politicians closing uh i can't think of any real example here in the uk i think we're generally quite okay with stuff if anything our turnout needs to be higher yeah really in elevators yeah Although in scotland though we're pretty good with that since 2014 we've been pretty yeah we pump yeah, out the a, numbers pretty well yeah in a in scotland like like the referendum was like 80 percent turnout like like the highest in like british yeah. history yeah 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 and in my by election it was like only like 20 percent turnout and it was very depressing <laughs> so talk to me about uh the count then um, both oh, nights. Yeah. So, what was the process of you know you, you finished up campaigning, the polls are closed. What happens after? Tell me about what happened throughout the night. Okay, well, uh, well, first of all, after after the polls close, right? If it's a local election, you don't know how well you've done because there's no exit poll for local elections. I don't think. Yeah. So, 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 mm-hmm. if it's a local election, there's no exit poll, so you don't know how you how 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 well you're expecting to do and 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 we do and we do do a bit of local polling here because because our leader of the council is kind of like a statistics nerd so we do so we do sort of do we do a bit of like local uh, uh, polling here but that's but that's not always accurate so then so 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 uh, after the polls close, normally what I do is I sleep for about an hour <laughs> and then go to the count. <laughs> but local election counts are always the next day. Well, at least they are in England. I'm not sure how it is in Scotland. But like, but, but like local election counts are always the next day. So, um, so, um, so it's not that big of a deal. But general election counts are literally right after the polls close so 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 it's so different so so, um so yeah with like like election counts when the polls close i normally just say bye to everyone go to sleep and then get the results the next day and so yeah and and like the count is like a very weird experience because because uh, because it is literally every candidate um who is who is eligible to stand has to go uh, and you also get to bring one guest. I just normally bring whoever wants to come because I always have a free seat. Uh, so, um, um, so, um, so your guest is normally someone um, is, is normally uh, a partner or, or a friend or something. And and so, so, so yeah. And and then like while you're at the count, uh, every every ward has um, has has um has that local party people like watching people uh like count the votes so 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 like there's like three people uh like watching all the counters count the votes uh i think i think that's how you that's how they do it to like protect the integrity of the votes and uh and then and then like one by one and then one by one um all the all the votes get announced and and then yeah that's pretty much it. I think, I don't know about Scotland. I remember I was at one council polling count one time and I'm trying to desperately remember if it was at night or in the next day, but I think you're right. I think in Scotland it is the next day as well. Yeah. Uh, now, you've run twice. Uh, tell me about like the end, like the kind of result for you. And tell me about the first time you lost. Uh, how did that? I mean, I I I kind of kind of relate to an extent with 2014 because obviously I campaigned for independence in 2014, 
And when I saw it was a novel, it completely was like it was gut wrenching. It yeah. felt de- like I felt personally devastated. Like I just and I guess twenty fourteen was different because for me it was like that was it. Well, we're never getting another vote this ever again in my life. So that we we failed. But, yeah, but I mean, like, how, I, how, how did you? How yeah. do you feel with yourself? Yeah, but I thanks the incompetence of the British government. You probably will be getting one soon. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I guess I guess the first time because the first time it was me, and it was uh, the first time I was running in the two seat ward. So the two conservatives picked up those two seats, but then but then I came third and I lost that second seat by about five votes and and yeah and it was pretty disappointing at the time but but then uh but because it was a very marginal i was all i was always expecting that sort of close result so 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 it didn't really hurt that much because i was always expecting it to be that close so so i was kind of prepared for that but um yeah and 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 the second time it was a by election so turnout is always lower and i got thrashed by like 200 votes and and at the time it didn't make sense to me because i had just run in that ward like three months earlier and lost by five but then but then like running again in the exact same ward like a couple of months after and losing by such a big margin but but I guess the local factors were a lot different uh, three months later because uh, because the Labour Party weren't polling that well then and like Brexit was more of an issue because because it was September time 2019 so it was like it was before the election was it it was before the GE was was announced but uh, but the Labour Party weren't polling that well at the time in the by election and and we didn't have that much help uh, was it from outsiders. But uh, so yeah, I guess yeah that 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 all makes sense. Uh, it makes sense now because because like local factors and and we had a huge and we had a huge uh, a huge issue with like with like local praise or was the rents going up and it was a very huge issue. So 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 like looking back at it now, all the factors of losing by that much does make sense. But at the time, I guess I was sad, but I was also I was like expecting it to be very marginal, like my first election. So I wasn't. So I guess I was prepared for that. Talk to you about then going for it for a third time then, because <laughs> if in my mind, if I went for two by ele- if I went for two elections and I had lost twice, I might feel defeated, but you're just going for it though. And you're, uh, like, you're, like, a, you're like a Terminator, you're unstoppable. So uh, what, this... what made you want to go for the candidacy again? What, uh, what was the motivation this, there? Uh, this, this third time is a story and a half, I'll tell you. <laughs> this... Folks, grab, get some popcorn and tea because we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> I'm not going to name any names, but I'm not going to throw tea at anyone, but this third time is a story and a bloody half. So, um, so like this before COVID was even an issue um so um so uh so after after the general election in 2019 where we got hammered across the country like we got hammered across the country so then like when it came to like selecting because uh, because normally we select candidates for may in october november right but because of the general election it was pushed back to eight it was pushed back till february so then we so then we selected our candidates in february so then like when i first applied to be a candidate for 2020 i got rejected and yes yeah and and i i mean the reason why i got rejected was because i it was, i i just it was just personal vendettas i have in the party it's all sorted now because it, it now but um but yeah yeah i got i got rejected and then and because 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 the the lcf because I passed the interview, was it with 100%, but then the LCF refused to endorse me, and and yeah, it, and 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 then I appealed that decision, and then and then and then Labour Southern Region overturned the decision, so then the LCF had to endorse me. Um, so why why was that? Was there any reason why they didn't endorse you for the third yeah, time? Yeah, it's I I. I, I over over the last three years, I've had a lot of personal vendettas with people, and 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 unfortunately, a lot of the people who didn't like me were on the EC at the time. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, so um, so um, so so then when I when I appealed that decision, uh, the uh, also uh, so Labour Southern Region overturned it. Uh, so yeah, and uh, it does um, so so. 
so then when I got that decision overturned then I was then put forward to obviously the branches vote and and uh, and and yeah and 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 then I put myself forward for my home seat which is uh, which at the time is safe labor we don't know how safe it will be with how to, actually uh, which 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 is normally safe labor we like haven't lost a seat since 2014 and uh and and so so then so i put myself forward for the seat and i was up against a sitting councillor for the seat who was okay. um who was who was who was also um obviously running to get reselected and, and i won that selection by about f- two votes and yeah and so um, is, that, is that quite tight right yeah 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 so um so so uh, i won that selection by two votes and then after that, after that, there was even more palaver because, uh, yeah, after that, there was, there was even more palaver because, um, because, yeah, that decision was then, was then put uh, to the, uh, to the southern region to have a look at. And, and, uh, and yeah, so, and, and because, uh, I don't know how to explain this without going into a lot of detail and like throwing shade at people, but like. Just do it, v- do it vaguely, you don't have to go into this super detail. <laughs> No, but um, so so the so 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 then that decision was then put forward to to Southern Region to have a look at, and but but then when Southern Region made the decision to uphold that decision because because there was like a whole deselection campaign, uh, was it for me, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so then so then that so then like that decision was then taken. So the so then Labour then decided to uphold that decision because the LCF had a look at the decision again. So um, so then the LCF and and Labour Southern Region then decided to uphold the decision. So then that means I was safe. And so yeah, and then and then I was and then the elections got cancelled because of COVID. So the unluckiest candidate in the world, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you can definitely, yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll try to find out people who are worse than you. We've got a competition here. Who has had a worse? But, uh, right. I'm so, not putting anyone off by actually running for cancel. Just, but. <laughs> it's a grand conspiracy against you, Kieran Khan. They're after you. No. The shadows of the Labour Party. Well, I, well, I guess. <laughs> I get. Uh, I guess, like with the direction the Labour Party is going in now, I wouldn't be surprised if I get suspended by the end of the month. <laughs> but, Oof, that's uh, cool, heavy. Um, yeah, oh, my 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 brother has just dropped the cat on me. Okay, <laughs> very bizarre. Anyway, sorry about the little distraction. Uh, Let's. Um, okay, so the election's been delayed for you. Yeah. But let's 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 see. Well, actually, regardless if you win or not, where do you see yourself? in the Labour Party in, say, 10 years' time. W- word, or even with that, where do you want to see the Labour Party within in 10 years' time? Well... Or where would you be within that Labour Party? Well, like, when it comes to the... When it comes to the direction of the Labour Party, I am... I am sort of not... Not... Uh, I'm, I'm sort of not optimistic about the future of it. Because um, because we we have seen the Labour Party uh, uh, polling a lot better. Like um, like like earlier earlier last month, we saw we saw the Conservatives not having a lead like the first time since last year. And and so but um so so I am I am optimistic in terms of polling, but I'm not optimistic in terms of the in terms of the direction that the current leadership of the Labour Party have, because, uh, because obviously Keir Starmer is, is, is like taking the party into a very different direction to what I would want it to be. And, and, and the current cabinet with, uh, with like Rebecca Long Bailey gone, who was like the last fight for the left in the current front bench now, and now that, well, so now that she was fired, uh, there's, there's, there's hardly, I don't think there's any left person there's not there's not any like Corbynistas or like any like lefties like left on the front bench anymore. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, but yeah, I don't think there's any more. So so um so I'm um so I guess within within the next ten years, I guess I would like to see the Labour Party shift back to the left because at the moment it's like shifting 
to the center and, and the policies they have come up with like like their rent policy just didn't make any sense and and their and and what really upset me and a lot of the Asian community was was their was their U-turn on Kashmir. And so um if you guys don't know about about what's going on in Kashmir, uh basically basically it is under um uh, um it was Kashmir is is kind of split. So it's so it's Azad Kashmir that that is controlled by the Pakistani authority and like Jammu Kashmir is controlled by the Indian authority and it's sort of under under occupation and 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 there and there is a campaign to basically like free Kashmir so it's a whole independent was sovereignty which I support so and um but then uh, so 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 last year um there was there was a motion passed at conference to um to basically respect the will of the Kashmiri people and because uh, because the um the Indian government revoked Article Thirty something, uh, which was which um, which which that actually gave special status to Kashmir, and and that and which, but because that special status has now been removed from the Indian Constitution, they have kind of like seized Kashmir, and uh, yeah, so so Kashmir has been under lockdown like way before covid because of this so then um so then there has been a campaign to basically free kashmir from like both autonomies like the pakistani and and the and the indian autonomy it's not just one autonomy so um so so yeah so then um but then but then Keir Starmer kind of like u-turned on that and and he kind of um um u-turned on that motion which really upset a lot of the asian community and so um so so yeah it's it's just, it's just like stuff like that that i'm not very optimistic about so i would really hope that after keir's like leadership is over um i really hope that we get another leader that will carry on well not carry on keir but like kind of move labor back to left and sort of yeah yeah just just move Labour back to the left. And like where where I see myself within ten years when the Labour Party, to be honest, I don't know. Politics is very is very uh not stable at all. Like like if you if you asked me three years ago, like would I have stood in two council elections before the age of twenty five? Like no. <laughs> no, like 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 I would have told you like what no way so 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 so, so to be honest I don't know where I see myself within the Labour Party because politics is very unstable. Like one day you could be this and then one day you can be that and then and then like the british uh obviously voting pattern changes changes all the time so so that politics is very unstable so if you want a stable career do not choose politics <laughs> is there any so you talk about where you think you'll be uh or at least in your own predictions but is it anywhere you want to be in 10 years uh, the party? No, no i'm not planning anything i just whatever comes comes i'm not planning anything because yeah go with the flow um, yeah yeah whatever comes comes if there if there if there's an opportunity then you never know but like like whatever comes i'm not here to uh, i'm i'm not i'm not like within the late party to like get rid of people or like start like another factional war like like whatever happens happens i guess during your time within the Labour party has there been any kind of big names that you've met during oh, that time yeah 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 I've met most of the front bench at this point, so yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, and y- go on. Y- yeah, I mean, uh, I've met Jeremy Corbyn like three times now. I've like met like Rebecca Long Bailey, like like yeah, yeah, like like on my social media, I have like selfies with like the with like m- most of the most of like most of like Corbyn's front bench, which what which was Corbyn's front bench. So yeah, yeah, I've met most of the front bench now. Have you spoken at a conference before? And if yes. so, what was it yes. about? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I spoke at a conference because, because, because for those who don't know, I, you, can, you can only speak at a conference if you're a delegate. If you, you, can, you can go to a conference as a visitor and, you're, and, and if you buy the full pass, you're, you're allowed full access to, um, to everything, but you have to go through lots of 
but you but you have to go through lots of security checks to even be eligible to buy a pass but um but yeah so um so you can go to conference if if you're if you're an orange red member you can you can buy a pass and get the full access but you can only speak on the podium in the front hall if you're a delegate and um and and how you become a delegate is you have to get selected by your local party to go as a local party delegate so so the first time I went to conference, it was in Brighton. So so that's not very far from me. So um, so the first time I went was in Brighton was in two thousand and seventeen, and I went as a visitor, and I stayed with like five other people who are from my CLP, and it was really fun. Um, so uh, but then the second time I went was in two thousand and eighteen, and two thousand eighteen. It was in Liverpool, so I knew I wouldn't be able to afford to go unless I was a delegate because because if you are if you are a delegate, you get all your expenses paid. If you if you are a visitor, you have to kind of fund yourself. So um so I knew that I wouldn't be able to afford to go to Liverpool if I wasn't if I was a delegate. So um so so I put myself forward to be a delegate. No one else wanted to be the youth delegate because you can only be a youth delegate if you're 26 and under. Um, which I'm fastly approaching 26, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, but yeah, you can only be a delegate if you're if you're uh, 26 and under. So then no one else wanted to be the youth delegate for that year. So I was the youth delegate, and and I got chosen to speak at conference. And uh, and it's sort of like a free for all of like how you're chosen to speak. Like the people in the on the podium just like pick random people. It's sort of like a free for all. And, um, and and I was lucky enough to get picked on my first time because not because because like not many people are picked because obviously it's a very limited window. So 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 I spoke in support of um or open selection. Now now what open selection is is that is that um is that um every every Labour MP wouldn't have to put themselves forward for uh, was it to get reselected by the party? Now, at the moment, we have a trigger ballot, and a trigger ballot is just not good enough to hold to hold it to hold the MPs to account. So then, uh, so then, so instead of instead of a trigger ballot, what what people on the left are actually um, campaigning for is to is to have a full selection um, all the time before <laughs> before before every every election so uh, so so i spoke in favor of that we still don't have full selection for for mps but we do have but we do have open selection in local council though so so it's kind of working our way up so we do practice um open selection in local council but we don't practice open selection in uh, for 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 departmental elections yet sorry apologies um my cat <laughs> is in the background turning into an absolute ninja and kind of cry chop my screen there i mean thank god we're not um releasing the video for this <laughs> yeah thank god obviously it'd be really embarrassing yeah. hey you, mika my cat's called I mika mean, by the way i mean maybe <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe one day if we do like create like a Patreon for this podcast, we might like release the videos on Patreon or something. <laughs> uh, I I need to get a better room and look nicer, <laughs> I guess. Okay, so from all from all of this, from your entire political journey uh, from twenty seventeen to twenty twenty, from just joining the party to becoming a candidate for the party itself. Is there any one story or one experience that stays with you for a long time? Anything that, you know, sits in the back of your mind and yeah. kind of has changed you quite a bit? Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got loads of experiences. Um is, I there, guess, is there one that stands out though, I guess? Like yeah, one very special one. Yeah, in two thousand and seventeen. In two thousand and seventeen, also when we won Canterbury. Uh, yeah, that um, even at the time, guys, I didn't know who how bad Rosie Duffield was. So don't cancel me on the left, guys. I, I at the time I didn't know how bad Rosie Duffield was, but um, but but um, <laughs> I can see you shaking your head. But <laughs> like when um, but in 2017, like like when I first heard we won Canterbury, it was like the biggest shock of my life because obviously we hadn't won that seat in like 200 years. I don't think we've ever won that seat before before Corbyn and 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 yeah so um so yeah that that really sticks in my mind because because I remember being at the count and and I remember hearing that we won Canterbury and I didn't believe the people who were telling me that I thought they were just pulling my leg so then so then like when I googled that and then saw and saw Labour won by about like 300 votes at the time it was like it was amazing like that was 
I think I think that'll be one of the standout moments. And 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 although this is not um this is not very like this is this is not very labour related, but in two thousand and nineteen I remember when Joe Swinson lost her seat, and I, and yeah, that was that was another story. Oh, what a night! <laughs> December back in '63. Oh, what a night that was! Yeah, yeah, uh, that mean, was that was the SNP by the way, folks. So if there's anything, if there's anything should reward us, give us independence for getting rid of Joe Swinson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, bless Amy Callahan. She's not very well at the moment, so so like bless her, and I am sending all my best wishes to her, but but. But um, but in 2019, when uh, because because she lost her seat in 2015 with like the SNP surge, but then she won it back in 17. Then she lost it again in 19. So um, so yeah, and um, so so okay, I will go into the full story for this. Uh, I think I think I've told you this story before, but <laughs> yeah, but go for it again, go for it again. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, okay. I will tell you the full story. So um, so 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 so, so like um. For 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 a couple of weeks before polling day, there were rumours that that Joe Swinson would lose her seat because because um, because like the SNP were like polling really really well at the time, and 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 um, yeah. So then so then so so on polling day, I was telling everyone, you know, um, when uh, when when. Or say when Joe Swinson's result is announced, call me over and we'll watch together. I was literally telling everyone because, uh, and then, and then when it did happen, people were like Kieran, Kieran, come, was it come watch? But it, I didn't know that the people who I was watching it with were actually Lib Dems because I was watching it because, <laughs> <laughs> because, because I was watching it on some random person's iPad who called me over. Yeah. So then, oh my God. so then, so then when they announced that, um, when they announced that Amy Callahan had one and even though it was a labor victory i was cheering like mad because i really don't like joe swenson so so i was cheering like mad but then the people who i was watching on because because i was watching the result on like some random guy's ipad who was sitting next to me but then he was a lib dem and like so then the contrast between us two i was cheering like mad and then the and then the person next to me was like, "Oh no, this is oh my thing. God. <laughs> but then, You might as well give them the finger for all that was worth. I didn't know. I didn't know that they were killing them. And then, and and then, like, because I was cheering like mad, some random person, uh, uh, like, like because I was, but like because I was cheering like mad, people, people, like coming up to me were saying, "Oh my God, did Labour win a seat?" I was like, "Oh, this is awkward." <laughs> You give him false hope, but in the end, though, it paid off because Joe Swinson's gone, and that was worth it. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm not the biggest fan of like Joe Swinson at all. I mean, I mean the way she. Um, I'm. Uh, I mean the way she stood uh, shoulder to shoulder with the Tories, joined the coalition. She she voted for for uh, like like when was it when the coalition was like going on she was she was one of like the head lib dems in that coalition right and like she voted with the tories more time than most than like some of the actual tory party did so 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 um yeah i i i am not a fan and and in 2010 she and the rest of she and the rest of the lib dems uh, stood uh, stood on the platform of um of of a free tuition fee, and then what did they do? They screwed us all over. So yeah, I so yeah, I I will. They screwed you guys over. I mean, we in Scotland, we're just. Um, yeah, don't. Over free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, whatever. But uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, see, 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 I, I, I'm still bitter about that coalition, and 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 I'm still bitter about about the Lib Dems. So um, so I remember cheering when Nick Clegg lost his seat in seventeen, like. That was also a standout moment. I remember cheering, but then, but then the guy who won that seat, kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah. If you if you guys don't, yeah. Know, <laughs> if you guys don't know the full story, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. But the guy who 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 actually won that seat of Nick Clegg, he kind of got suspended from the Labour Party, kind of very, 
kind of behaved badly against his staff and yeah not a fan not a fan but uh, but at the time i didn't know this so don't cancel me guys so um so yeah um, all those times she says don't cancel her please don't cancel <laughs> honestly don't cancel her <laughs> but, yeah. multiple times <laughs> yeah but, but, yeah yeah i remember cheering uh cheering when nick clegg lost his seat that was another standout moment i was like justice to my 45k uh student debt thanks clegg but Jared, um, it sounds like most of your joy comes out the suffering of a <laughs> liberal democrat and to be fair i completely understand it in fact i endorse it so here we go hey the lib Dems just could have said no and we wouldn't have had a tory government so yeah i'm not i'm not a fan I'm not a fan at all I, i'm not a fan is there anything you do differently in your time as as a from an activist to a councillor is there anything you do differently now if, when you can reflect on your journey I guess, um, I don't know, I guess, like, I guess, I, I guess, like, you could always work harder, couldn't you, like, within the local election campaigns, uh, because, uh, because that first time, that first time when I lost by five votes, I was thinking to myself, oh, what if I spoke to one more family, or, like, what if I spoke, or, like, what, what if I deliver, like, ten more leaflets, like, so it's, but, like, like, those things, like, kind of drill in your head, but I guess, I guess when I first joined, joined the party, I, I guess I was I was more involved in I guess I try and I guess I guess I wasn't as involved in the trade unions when I first when I first became um, a Labour Party member because 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 I joined the trade unions a lot later than the Labour Party and so yeah so I I guess I wish I was more involved in trade unions before because because like some of the best stuff that I've gotten to do is because of the trade union that I'm involved with and and yeah and and yeah I've gotten to uh, do some stuff with Labour as well but like the majority of like the stuff that's like changed my life I I've gotten to do because of like Unite funding and like because of like Unite like um, endorsing me for stuff so yeah I get I guess I I guess I wish I was more involved in trade unions before. And is there anything? Is it, what was I say there? Is there anything you believe that would be different in another party which you which you had in the Labour Party? So, for example, the involvement of unions is obviously one thing in the Labour Party, which you just don't get, say, in the Conservative Party. Is there anything else like that you think that, from your experience, would be different from other parties or other candidates, other parties? Well, I guess I, I guess because like obviously, obviously the Labour Party are the biggest party on the left, or I say left, very, very, uh, very, you know, um, uh, was it gradually now because of the current leadership? But, um, but I guess I guess the Labour Party are like the cut, like the biggest party on the left on this in this country so they get the most media attention. But so and 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 it is. And it's just that sort of attention that like the Greens don't get, or, or like, or like, or like even even like the Lib Dems don't get any more because uh, because like they went from like sixty seats like back in the day to like like nine now. So so I um but I mean like they deserve losing all their seats, but uh, but yeah I guess I guess I guess because of the added media attention to was it to the Labour Party being like the biggest party on the left in the UK. You, I guess you just have to be careful because because. Because if you um, because if you like run for the Labour Party, your chances of elected are a lot higher than um, than than if you run for a party from like a smaller party. So yeah, I, I guess you I guess you just have to be more aware of what you're doing because there is a chance you will be elected if you run for the Labour Party. So I guess you just have to be more aware because of the added media attention. <laughs> okay. Is there any last words you want to say just before this kind of episode sort of ends, really? Well, we've still got a lot more to talk about, though, don't we? Well, we've been doing it for an hour, and I feel like (laughs) we will be here for another hour, too. So it'll be a (laughs) two-hour podcast. But I think you've really covered all the main grounds. And to be honest, a lot of it, what you've said is similar to what I've experienced as well, but you've obviously more to tell because you've been an actual candidate before. So, well, maybe... See my my <laughs> my shadow inside <laughs> story. So to another, another maybe episode or some other kind of thing. But before we go, is anything you want to say or add just to everything you said? And we can reflect on everything you've just said at all today. Well, I guess, I guess because like my journey is still beginning. Because obviously, 
I'm right at the beginning of my political even though I'm like three years in now because like 2020 like oh my god how is it almost 2021 already but um but yeah so um so um so even I I guess there's a lot more to come like being so young so I guess I guess it's a bit too early to reflect on things is there any kind of cheesy quotes you have for anyone you know as a sort of inspiration to kind of get involved in politics uh hashtag for the many not the few <laughs> what sorry hashtag for the many not the few <laughs> yeah which was... i meant i'm i meant something more like am i like uh when you do things right people won't be sure you've done anything at all <laughs> no I, i'm not the best at quotes but <laughs> so no not that's your, that's, that's your quote right there i'm not the best at quotes there we go yeah okay there you go <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you all for listening to this. So the next um, time, so obviously this time we covered me, next time we're going to cover cameras. <laughs> yes, we'll cover me in <laughs> sadness and hope. A mixture of both. And also honey, because I like honey. Anyway, I don't know why I did. I just I'm picture myself covered in yeah, honey. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, yeah, yeah. And, also, and also we've got to do, I mean... Uh, I mean, like, we've got so much more stuff to cover. Like, like, uh, like we, like, we do want to cover Scottish independence one day, and 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 like devolution, and like, I like the current situation. So yeah, I think we should cover that as well. We we'll also want to do a discussion on who'd win a fight and have leader <laughs> leaders from different political parties or history fight each other we're in different scenarios. That. We're not doing <sighs> okay. that. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for listening, and Bye. we will see you next time. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> and that's us.